Hey guys, today is July 10th, 2011, and this is my garden update for Wisconsin. I haven't been here for three weeks, and my garden shows it because it's gone totally wild. I have a lot to show you, and here's my garden up here. As you can see, it's completely overgrown now. And the worst part of it is, over here, my tomatoes have gone crazy. They need to be tied up because they're falling all over the place right now. And I have a lot to show you, so let's get on with it. Okay, first off, I gotta show you my pumpkins for the pumpkin contest. And my Dills Atlantic Giants have taken off. Uh, the vine starts over there, runs this way, this way. And it's about 15 feet long, maybe 20 feet long. And as you can see here, we have some little pumpkins on this vine. And this one, I'll show you what I do to pollinate. Okay, for pumpkin pollination, you gotta find a male flower. Here's a male flower here. And you can tell that because there's no little pumpkin on the flower. So what I do, just go over cut it off like so okay then I take my male flower and I strip away all the petals like this and there's the part we need there it has all the pollen and carefully take it off okay so there you have it and uh, let me show you what to do with that Okay, and then you choose your female pumpkin that you want to pollinate, and this one is in a really good spot because it's kind of shaded, so the pumpkin won't be baked in the heat of the day under the sun. And that one just opened up today, so that's the one I'm going to pollinate. And you can see the vine going off into the woods. I'm going to have to move it because I don't want it climbing this pine tree here. Alright, and this is what I do to pollinate. You just take the male part and put it inside the female flower and get pollen all over in there. Shake it around and the more pollen the better. So do a nice job getting it all over in there. Okay and then some people I know they uh, take the flower and they'll tape it shut so that it doesn't cross-pollinate with other pumpkins in the garden. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't even have tape here. So, yep, that's it. That one's going to be a nice pumpkin. Well, so far the Atlantic Giants are beating all the other pumpkins I have here. And they're spreading all over the place. And they're doing what I didn't want them to do. They're going right through the tomato plants. And you can see there's a vine going that way. And it's actually about a foot away from the sprinkler right now you could see one going right up at it so I don't need these pumpkins up in my tomatoes they're gonna totally rip them down so I'll see if I could fix that today and here are my other pumpkins here these are my multicolored pumpkins lots of flowers and they have a vine crossing this way and lots of vines going every which way through there this whole place is just all pumpkins. And over here, you can see my white pumpkins. I have no idea which way their vines go. But they're starting to go this way into the weeds here, which is what I want them to do. And um, over here, I need to show you, you can see that red colored sand. Something dug a hole there. Let me show you the hole. I'm not sure what did it, but it must be like a badger or something. Uh, I'll show you the hole and you decide what it could be. Okay, there's the hole where the animal lives. And I'm not sure what it is, but he dug about a six inch wide hole. We don't have gophers here, so I figure it must be a badger. And uh, he must have dug pretty deep because that sand that is that color is pretty deep down. So, who knows, maybe it's a fox. Any ideas? 
All right, in the weeds here among the pumpkins are my watermelons. You can only tell them by the leaves. And their vines crisscross the pumpkins every which way. And actually down here I found a, a, my first watermelon. So hopefully that thing takes off. And uh, let me show you what else is going on here. Okay, here are my cucumbers. As you can see, something has been munching in the leaves, some kind of insect. Which, I haven't found the insect yet, but he's pretty much destroyed all the uh, leaves of this cucumber plant. And all throughout here, he left the uh, pumpkin leaves alone, but you can see the cucumber leaves must be their favorite, because they're totally devouring them. And I'm not having luck with my cucumbers this year. First it was deer, then it was Bigfoot, and uh, now it's some kind of bug. Okay, what you're looking at here are my China Rose Radishes. They're heirloom. I bought the seeds for nine cents for a pack. Couldn't pass it up and uh, I wasn't planning on planting these this year, but they are ready to be picked and actually this one's going to seed. And three weeks ago, these are only a few inches high. They grew really fast and let me show you what they look like. Okay, here's what they look like. They're, they're kind of long. Let's see here, grab this one. Kind of an unusual radish. And uh, well actually this one has a little insect damage. But yeah, that's what these guys look like. And I'm gonna pick all these and um, let that one that's gonna go to seed, go to seed. All right, what you're looking at here are my turnips. These are purple top white globe. Uh, turnips. Uh, they're from the um, 1885 retail catalog of James J. H. Gregory and you're supposed to eat them when they're about three to four inches in diameter and I'm about to pick some. All right, uh, let's see here. This one looks like a nice big one. Uh. Well, that's maybe about two inches across. So maybe I'll let these get another two weeks old before I finish them. Okay, what you're looking at here are my Burpee Bloody Butcher heirloom tomatoes. And it's raining out, so I'm filming in the rain today. And you can see they're about three feet tall right now. And this is the only plant I have of the Bloody Butcher in this whole garden. And let me show you some more. All right, this plant here is Tommy Toe tomatoes. I got these at uh, Totally Tomatoes. And they're little uh, cherry tomatoes. And we'll see how these things do this year. They're about four feet tall right now. Okay, what you're looking at here are Sheboygan tomatoes. They've been grown since the early 1900s by Lithuanian immigrants in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. They make uh, four to six ounce fruits. And these guys have been going crazy up here. I have a lot of plants going of these. And uh, they're about maybe uh, over four feet tall, maybe almost five feet tall. And they're producing fruits like crazy right now. So I'm really happy with the way these came out. All right, what you're looking at here are my Wisconsin 55 heirloom tomatoes. They were bred by J.C. Walker at the University of Wisconsin in the 1940s. And these things grow great up here, supposedly, in Wisconsin, so <clears throat> you can see they're about three foot tall plants, and they just started getting flowers when they hit about three foot tall, so they seem like they're late producers. Um, I'm not sure if I'll grow them next year, we'll see how they do. Alright, what you're looking at here are my Big Zach tomatoes. Uh, they're supposed to give me four to five pound fruits, maybe seven pound, who knows. But uh, let me go and show you just how big this fruit is already and it's only it's got to be less than three weeks old and it looks like it already weighs a pound and it's right here as big as my hand so uh yeah it's got to be about a pound already let's see what this thing can do okay if you remember these these are clones from my orange cherry tomatoes that I grew indoors in hydroponics and it's a small plant and maybe it has, I don't know, eight tomatoes on it that are ripe. And it's a pretty good producer. 
All right, what you're looking at here are my Mexico midget tomatoes. These were also from a clone that I did in my hydroponics over the winter. And these plants are about five feet tall now. And they have quite a few ripe ones in there. And I have two of these in this garden. You can see how tall it is. And here's another one right next to it. You can see that one. And there's my pollination friend. He's on my Mexico midgets. Here's another view of the tomato forest and you can see that the tomatoes are growing taller than the sprinkler now. And um, yeah, there's so many suckers in there I just can't keep up with it. So I haven't been here for three weeks and the suckers have just gone crazy and the suckers have flowers now. So just gonna let it go and keep uh, tying things up as it grows. And I won't be back here for another two weeks. so. I'll probably be shocked when I get here next time. Okay, what you're looking at here is a Kentucky Wonder Bush Bean. And I have a whole bunch of them here. I forget how many we planted. A couple hundred, I think. But uh, a bunch of wildflowers grew in between them. And uh, the beans have a lot of flowers themselves, so I expect to have a lot of uh, beans in the next couple weeks. Alright, what you're looking at are my potatoes. They're doing very well. Next to them are my onions, and those are doing well too. And we'll see what kind of results we get this fall with those. Well, one thing that surprised me this weekend is that we have a mulberry tree. And the mulberries are starting to ripen. And we're going to pick a bunch of them today. And uh, have a nice big bowl of mulberries. Alright, what you see here are my wild raspberries. We have hundreds of plants throughout the property. And uh, they're starting to ripen now. So we're going to start picking them. Hey guys, what you're looking at here are wild asparagus seeds. When they form, they kind of hang off the branch, and I'm going to harvest some and see if I can get some to grow. But yeah, here's the whole plant. Well, I guess that's about all I can do till next time. Here's an overview of the garden, and that's it. Take care, guys.